All right, well, welcome. This is our Spartan Voices Live podcast. We're getting to see how various members of the Desmet Jesuit community are dealing with and living in situations of quarantine and social uh, distancing. Uh, so I'm here today with uh, Mr. Howie Place and his newest member of the family, uh, Nico, uh, his young son, Nico. Uh, remind us, Mr. Place, how old is Nico at this point? Uh, yesterday, he turned six weeks old. So okay. so he is six a, weeks. quite a young little dude. Very good. Well, we're, we're happy to have him here with us. And I imagine he's a major part of your uh, life under the, the social uh, distancing. Oh, he has been. Yeah, we've uh, we've been really adjusting to just how it all works um, family-wise, you know, with Lindsay on maternity leave right now. Uh, the me going to school, like, planned routine has really gotten kind of tossed out. Um, yeah. In some ways, it's been really great because with her home full-time, like, on, you know, on, on leave and not having to worry about going into a hospital, that's kind of protected us a little bit from coronavirus scare stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And we've really been able to, to do social distancing. Well, you know, yeah. we're, uh, we're, we're doing like one trip a, a week out to grocery stores and, and it's pretty much just family time and then remote learning. So I've, uh, I've been able to pull a lot of weight helping with the three older boys or with, uh, with Nico or some combination. And we're, uh, yeah, we're, we're doing a lot there. Um, and that's been good because, you know, four kids under five years old is, that's, that's no small feat um, to try to juggle that, especially with a newborn who's breastfeeding and all that. Uh, it's been a real blessing in disguise that we've been able to have this time. Um, not without its juggling, you know, and, and struggles with, you know, I'm here but I'm in the basement right now in our guest bedroom. And uh, that, that means that like, sometimes I think it's like, ah, you know, if you were at DeSmet, I couldn't be mad at you for not being here. But you know, like, <laughs> it's just funny. It's funny. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. What, so tell me what's the, the juggling, like what, what are the moments of your day where you find the most, uh, the, the most, just j juggling clubs up in the air or whatever. Oh my gosh. Well, certainly like the start of the day is always a, a fun, like, how are we going to do this? Cause you know, it just nighttime feedings just seem to take a while. His, uh, his little butt is, uh, is a little redder than we'd want it to be. So that means that we're changing at every feeding, um, mm -hmm. including in the middle of the night. So like, the uh, the nighttime feed isn't this like little blip in the in the evening. It's like a full on forty five minute to longer ritual. And so morning times come around and we're we're both sort of reeling, you know, like whoa, that was you know didn't get as much sleep as we'd wanted to. And you know, three dudes running into our room, like <laughs> let's go, here we go. Um, it's like okay how is this going to work? How are we going to do this? Um, and so kind of getting the morning off and running has always been a, a big juggle point. Um, but then just kind of trying to, trying to figure out on the, the school end, you know, I want to be really available with these like office hours at the beginning of class. Um, but then in those breaks, like the last part of class, that's an opportunity for me to kind of pop up upstairs, see how things are going, you know, grab somebody and, and rock them or uh, try to put out a fire or, or like let Lindsay go to the bathroom, you know, like these kind of funny things that uh, that balancing has been, mm. it's its own sort of try, let's try to find the rhythm, you know. So, so you, you mentioned not only do you have Nico, but the three older boys. Uh, what are they filling their days with so far? We, so they're also kind of doing remote learning at the preschool level. So their teachers are sending, you know, videos and suggestions for, you know, projects. And 
we've been trying to take them up on as many of those as possible. So everything from kind of fun art projects uh, to, you know, every morning the boys do um, like a 30 minute uh, kid yoga routine that like their, their movement instructor at Holy Cross uh, like has been sending these things out. So we do morning yoga apparent, I mean, you know, to, to like, you know, a fish and tortoise and stuff like that. Um, But like, so they're kind of bopping around doing that, doing a lot of art, reading a ton of books. They're like really into these little Nat Nat Geo books right now. Okay. Um, So learning about natural disasters and the planets and dinosaurs and we're doing a lot of that. But then their schooling's also been like, all right, hey, here's a, here's like a scavenger hunt to go and do outside. So on our like, walks we've got them like looking for different things you know like four different size sticks and uh you know a flat rock and a rough rock and uh you know like it's that's been kind of fun too um so we're we're doing a lot of the sort of like natural parent schooling that uh that you do but it's been fun to have people like feeding us ideas for that this whole time yeah yeah uh, so it sounds kind of like you're you're redirecting energy. You know, they have energy. Can you point it at something that's going to yeah. be both upbuilding and not going to drive you crazy? Right, right. Like the these these things on the wall were very much like an art project that was school related. That we were like, hey, let's run with this. Let's let the guys kind of make make some things with different paper shapes. You know, identifying shapes, using shapes to build things, and right. and that was fun and. They were happy. We got a little a little owl over here from Colby and a robot from Liam. And then, okay. Uh, and then Malachi drew, uh, or colored in at least, uh, George from Peppa Pig. So uh-huh. he was excited about that. Yeah, but, you yeah. know, those, those sort of like projects, you know, like, hey, you guys got to help me decorate my new remote learning classroom. And then we'll like do something that, you know, maybe they were like, I don't know if I really want to do this, but if I get to help decorate your classroom, I'll totally do this thing, you know? Yeah, that's a, so yeah, that's, it's, it's a dance, right? I see that. That's my memory. When I was teaching sophomores, it was very similar. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> how can I get them to do something that maybe they don't want to do, but in the end, if I frame it the right way, they'll be all about it. Yeah, that's exactly. So yeah, good. Uh, th- th- what you mentioned, Peppa Pig, uh, <laughs> yeah. classic, you know, uh, children's uh, TV show. Oh uh, uh, yeah. So so I'm I'm curious. I don't know. You you probably aren't watching much yourself. But what what's streaming right now in the house in the place household? What's oh man, you- I'd say um, some of the worst is probably Peppa Pig, okay. but then the best. Um, is when I can get the dudes to watch a uh, wild Kratz ah. with me because like that you know they're learning about a different animal each each episode and that's pretty neat um the older boys have just kind of gotten excited about this new Amazon um, original called tumble leaf okay. which is just kind of beautiful like it's really aesthetically well put together like music and uh and like just the the craft of the the show, like I I don't mind when that's on in the background. So uh, nice. Um, that would be a good parent to, to parent suggestion. Okay. Okay. Tumble leaf. Yeah. Tumble leaf. That you said Amazon. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's great. I mean, and I think my experience is like that. There are certain things that we have more time for, less time for. Or, you know, that the, the life is, is you know in the kind of paraphrasing the funeral liturgy life has changed <laughs> it's not yes. over, uh, but it's still uh there, there's kind of some things that we we may get to do that we didn't get to do before and other things that we would like to be doing uh we're not able to right yeah yeah i mean the whole spring we sort of felt like was going to be um kind of built around the ultimate frisbee scene and schedule you know like i think going into this spring Lindsay was really excited like the boys are in an age that they want to be throwing frisbees they wanted to be around and they were at our first and only game um mm-hmm. and we're loving it 
And it was like, great, this is awesome. This is, a, we're going to do this this spring. And then, uh, nope, sure don't get to do that. Uh, so that not only was kind of something that I was looking forward to from the school side, but then integrating that into family life, you know, that was yeah. going to be something that we were excited about. Um, but, you know, like, man, are we, man, are we crushing bike rides right now? Like we're, we are on bikes every day. The dudes are zooming around all over the place and they're loving that. And that's been fun to kind of like, that's been our exercise. That's been, you know, a good chance to kind of be out and doing that together. So like you said, life has changed. Mm. Yeah, no, that's good. I, 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 I wanted to check in about the ultimate and that's yeah. Tough to oh, be man. without, I'm sure. It's been hard just to, I think the, the thing that's most challenging is just really thinking about our seniors and knowing that, you know, this isn't, this isn't how they wanted to, mm. to go out. Um, they had kind of a vendetta, a score to settle and, uh, and they're kind of getting that opportunity stolen away from them. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they're, they're bumming those Schulenbergs and, um, Worth and Burton. Oof. It's hurting for them. It is. It is hard. And I think that's a part of what we, we have to do is kind of stay, uh, stay a moment in some of those sad things. Like we're not to move too quickly, but to say like, Oh yeah, this is a loss. This is not, uh, uh, something that is easy to lose. Uh, so we just get yeah. that time and, and, and space. Yeah. Yeah. And just missing the relationships too. I think, you know, that, that part of what we had have, but you know, in, in a past sense too, like we're missing that, that brotherhood, you know, the, mm -hmm. the student brotherhood that we get to witness the student teacher brotherhood that we get to kind of partake in. Um, and then the collegiality that we're all like, I mean, that's a fabric of, of our lives that we're having to um, appreciate in absence. Mm -hmm. You know, like, wow, that's something that we have um, and that is real. And um, we'll look forward to it again when we get it again. Um, but in the in the meantime, it's just. How do you how do you keep moving without that? Yeah. Any thoughts or, or experiences? What's what is helping sustain you either kind of a, on an emotional or a spiritual level at this point? Um. Honestly, one of the more sustaining things emotionally and spiritually for, spiritually for me has been, um, has been a, an opportunity to run. Um, cause the, 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 the circus that we're running at home, um, mm -hmm. as joyful and, and awesome as it is, uh, some of the opportunity to like pause like we would talk about, um, it's, it's sometimes less apparent or less, less available in the moment. You know, I, am I able to do it? Yeah. Um, but it's not as natural. And I think when I take a step away, like when I'm out on a, on a run, like boys are down for naps. Um, and, uh, and I go out for a half an hour, sometimes that step away helps me kind of to appreciate and, and see the joys of the day um, in, in that kind of new light, you know? Um, I would love to say that I'm getting up early and, and getting some like good reading in or like, <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> oh no, I am not. Yeah. So. Well, it, sounds, it sounds like there's reason though. It's uh, the, yeah. The, if sleep is at a premium, you don't need sleep to, is definitely at a premium to chip away at it. But. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. By the time the house is cleaned up and like, even just like the time that we're used to, um, like the, like the relationship time that Lindsay and I are used to, like, I, obviously that was going to be a little bit different with Nico here, but some of the stuff that when the boys were out of the house or when like we could, when we're, when we're at a park and we're doing stuff, that's also time that the house is not being destroyed, you know? Mm -hmm. So like <laughs> when, when every day we've been in our house or around our house all day, 
that means that there's a lot of destruction that needs to kind of like be reset or uh or at least m marginally cleaned up so then like you got that every night too as part of the the ritual and routine um so that's been kind of a funny thing too you know um that's just made made our evening routine a little bit different too so In yeah increased demands increased demands yeah yeah it's hard right? but real yeah absolutely i wonder if you might say a word a little bit about the remote learning experience what's you have there been uh positives to it where or what is what are some of the things that you've noticed in the first week of teaching online i'd say um you know something that the kp said as we were entering into this is that we were really we're going to do a lot of learning um it might not have been the learning we had planned on doing but we really all as a community we're going to do a lot of learning and and we have um for me individually uh having to really do ed puzzle and learn how to post you know a, a video message to my classes and really use microsoft teams like i wasn't using microsoft teams at all before this stuff um did we have that there did did ed puzzle exist yeah all that stuff like totally did and i thought it'd be neat to use but never did uh so having to now use those tools has meant that there's been a lot of growth there and i think that's true for our, our community it's been neat to see kind of the community of colleagues like posting ideas um you know sourcing out um questions and that that's been really neat um and and a like a growth edge for us i'd say for me and my students um you know there's guys that i think are taking the responsibility of their academic success kind of seriously in a new way um because there's really nothing to fall back on you know i think some guys who they would just kind of eventually figure out what they needed to figure out in the room when they're actually there they're, they don't have a room anymore so mm -hmm. they really have to like read directions thoroughly and they have to like clarify an instruction, uh, whether it's via email or um, like an office hours chat. That stuff's been cool that guys have just been really proactive about. Well, I guess I need to fix my, you know, if I have got a problem or a question, that's kind of on me. Like, I don't just get to listen to another guy asking that question or, um, I don't know, eventually like slip, slip through. Uh, that you know, I've got to turn my own assignments in. I've got to get this stuff done, and that's been kind of neat. It's been hard to get feedback from them, um, and I've had to, a lot of my like check-ins have really been asking them for like feedback on the process, on assignment clarity, or just the week, um, their workload. Like I, that's the stuff that um, you just really naturally pick up as guys are coming into the room or like you're kind of talking before like things really kick in at the start of class. Uh, yeah, so I think some of my context for the students is lacking and I, mm. and I feel an urgency to like know it, you know, like I don't want to proceed without understanding where they are. Um, and so, yeah, I've been asking, you know, when we have our department meetings, like I want to know what other people are hearing um, from the guys or what KP's hearing from the guys, just to just to try to make sure that we're we're meeting them where they are, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's been that's been good. Uh, I think there is another like funny thing that uh, <laughs> I, I I don't know if you've heard this before, but some some teachers in our building, and I think teachers in general sometimes like to say like. And I'd be such a good teacher if the students weren't here, you know, like if it wasn't for the kids, like I would, I'd totally be crushing all this stuff. Um, and this is kind of what we're doing now, you know, like all of the like teaching stuff that doesn't really involve the, like the face to face kids. Like I, you know, like I, I'd say my assignments are like pretty freaking dynamite right now. 
uh, because that's my only interface with my guys. Not only, but like main interface with my guys. Uh, as opposed to when I'm in the room, yeah, my assignments matter. Yeah, like that stuff matters, but the the like the texture of the relationship that you pick up in the room, um, that's that takes time and precedence and uh that's part of it in a way that all of a sudden it's not uh or it's different mm. um so yeah some of the teaching without the students in the room has been kind of a funny like we're living that quote a little bit yeah yeah how do you may have you had any moments of of connection with students or the the classes that have really these uh the like online office hours ha has been kind of neat like guys are only coming in if they have questions but when they pop in just like they would to like campus ministry or or your classroom like yeah they've got a question or they have something that they need help with but that's an that's an, an opportunity um too it's an opportunity to like see how they're doing um get to get to sort of laugh with them or just look them in the eyes and and like i don't know just those little like person to person reads we all make hey it looks like you're it looks like you're struggling how can i kind of i don't know gently ask what's going on or you know oh cool i love love seeing the blues jersey on the on like in your living room like oh, who's that signed by you know like those things are neat too um so we've gotten to share a little bit of that which has been fun yeah, that's uh, really uh, important connections to be making. Yeah, to, to have those, and one of the reasons why we're doing this uh, podcast in this, at this moment is just to keep those uh, faces a part of our lives to keep sharing. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to see, um, you know, who who else you're talking to, and just to kind of hear from from everybody else about how things are going. Absolutely. <laughs> well, anything else uh, you want to share with the the broader Spartan community? Ooh, um, doesn't have to come to mind right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we want to thank you, Mr. Place, uh, for for joining us here today. Uh, really helpful to to get a peek into. The many demands of the father of four boys, uh, all <laughs> under the age of five, you're saying? <laughs> all under five, four kids okay. under five, yeah. Well, I, I'm literally picturing you juggling five children, and that sounds, sounds demanding. Uh, absolutely, our thoughts and prayers are with you and, and the whole uh, Smack community, so hopefully. And, and likewise, um, we have... My whole family's definitely been thinking about everybody at the Smith, so that's uh, maybe that's the final thing to to want to share. Just gratitude for the community. Um, in in missing it, um, there's a real there's a real appreciation that's developed. So that's where I'm at. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, Father. Appreciate it.